Welcome back to Upside Down Data. We need to talk about Fetch AI. So FET, the token for Fetch AI, has been going absolutely crazy the last few days. If we just do a measure move just from a few days ago, Wednesday, to where we are right now, we're up 56% from there. We were up as high as 75% in three days. Absolutely crazy. And if we go all the way back down to where this rally started back here in early February, we're up 225%, just absolutely wild. FET has absolutely been one of the most impressive performers more recently, but frankly, in this entire bear market. If we just take a look at the bottom to where we are now, talking almost 3,000% move to the upside. Absolutely wild. So what I want to talk about now is where are we? So that's all things that have happened in the past. What we care next about is where is it going after this? Is it going to continue to be able to rally or is some correction likely? So we're going to talk about a few things that will be important to watch. So one thing that's going to be useful to keep an eye on is if we look at the FET valuation against Bitcoin, it's in an interesting spot right now. So this is basically FET divided by Bitcoin. And what you can see is that generally speaking through its life so far, FET has kind of oscillated around Bitcoin, but now it put in a new all-time high, or it's at least right around those prior all-time high levels. So it'll be interesting to see is can it continue that outperformance, really break out of this earlier paradigm it had been stuck in and actually continue to outperform Bitcoin to the upside. One thing that's going for it, if you're not familiar, FET or Fetch AI is an AI related project. It's really a marketplace for people to be able to exchange resources to use for training AI models and things like that. And so it is very much benefiting from the AI hype that has come around. And that's something that's very notably different about this cycle than last cycle. Last cycle, we didn't have ChatGBT. We didn't have these LLMs that generated all this hype and these big bubbles that are forming with NVIDIA and all these other things related to AI. Now we have that. And so it's reasonable to think that FET might be in a bit of a different paradigm now than it was last cycle. And it could draw in a lot more liquidity into itself maybe than last cycle because of its fit with that narrative. So that's something that's gonna be important to keep an eye on. The fact that we're already breaking above these all-time highs in the valuation against Bitcoin, it would not surprise me at all if it can continue that going forward. Now, it doesn't mean I'll go there in a straight line. It could correct here against Bitcoin and then move up later. But I do think it'd be reasonable to think that could happen because again, it's in a different place than it's been, especially back here in 2021. Okay, so that's something just to think about it in relation to Bitcoin. I want to flip over some on-chain data that I think gives some nice context into what the FET market looks like right now. So this is something that you're not going to be finding elsewhere. Most people do not have on-chain data for all coins. That's something we actually do have on our website, partydigital.io, link in the description if you want to check it out. So we can look under the hood at the network and get a sense of what is going on. What are the actual behavior of people when it comes to trading FET? So the first thing I want to look at here is the net realized profit and loss on the network or profit versus loss on the network for FET. So FET is a, it's an ERC-20. So that's where this is all kind of being traded, the, the chain that's being extracted from Ethereum. So this right here is just the raw dollar value of basically the net profit versus loss. So higher values up here mean a ton of profit were taken. Low values mean a bunch of losses were taken. And so they happen at relatively logical places where you expect near around tops. These people are a bit early in realizing their profits maybe from here or some of these lower levels. But then also big capitulations you can see visualizing as well. So if we're just looking at raw numbers. Now this is important to mention, this is just raw numbers. So it's just, so it's not really taking into account what the price is, it's just the amount of money that was made profit or loss. We can see we have had some profit taking happen with this run up, not nearly as much as what happened back over here in this run and nowhere near what we had happen back over here in this run up but definitely some that is happening. So what that might suggest is that people are taking profits, but not to the same degree as we've seen at other local tops. And so I don't think this necessarily has to be a sign that the rally has to end immediately, though with it going so crazy, it would not be surprising to see more profit taking, it's slowing down, have to consolidate at some point in the not too distant future. But this isn't a sign that we have to have any kind of major top or some crazy amount of selling pressure. And the other reason why I say that is this is a little bit misleading because it's not accounting for price. Price is way higher here than it was down here. So what I'm gonna show you next, I'm just gonna take this off. I'm gonna put up this formula I created. This is basically normalizing the profit or loss, net profit or loss to the price of FET. So basically what I did in this formula was I'm just dividing the net profit loss by the price of FET. And so this is really getting us an approximation of how many FETs worth 
of profit or FET's worth of loss happen at a given moment. And so what you can see when you do it that way is that what happened more recently is just a blip on the radar. It doesn't even hardly register. So for example, with this big notable top, we saw this big spike here, a bunch of profit taking happened over here, and then we went to the big bear market. Over here, it's just not even really registering yet. And the reason for that is that the price of FET is higher than it's ever been. It's at all time highs. And so that means that, that not as many FET needs to be sold in profit to generate a massive profit in absolute dollar value. So what it means is that not a huge amount of the FET supply has really shifted, or at least not a lot of the supply that's in profit has really shifted to generate that amount. We also visualize this, I think, maybe a little more clearly when we look at the amount of FET that's held in profit versus loss. And this also reinforces the idea that not a huge amount has necessarily traded hands at this current moment. So this is basically what it sounds like. It's the supply, the percentage of the total supply of FET that exists in the circulating supply that is currently held in profit. And we'll notice that in bull markets, when you're going on these parabolic moves, you can sustain really high levels of this for a while, for a long time. And that's what happened through here. Then we kind of went down, still most people were in profit. We went up down to the prior all-time high where everyone again was in profit. And then that led into the bear market, but a lot of sustainability in the earlier part of the bull market at those high levels. And we've now gotten back to that level. For the first time this cycle, we've gotten up to 100% of the FET being held in profit, which would be what you expect when you break a new all-time high, that's kind of has to happen. But you'll notice is that we did shift down a little bit here. The percentage kind of fluctuated a little bit down through here, but it wasn't massive. It wasn't like a ton of people were selling out and then some people were dipping down into loss in these little dips. There's some trading of hands that happened here, but not a huge amount. And now we're back up to 100% in profit. So what'll be useful to watch is how this develops going forward. Do we see more profit taking happen in terms of more amount of FET exchanging in profit being put out there? And then does that then translate that if we get a dip on the FET price, does that correspond to a massive drop in the percentage that's held in profit? So for example, here, a lot of transaction probably happened up here because you'll notice that as price fell down, suddenly we went from 95% people being in profit to only about 71%, which means that a lot of people sold here and a lot of people bought here. And then we went down here and then now we're going back up again. So something we're gonna have to watch, but so far it doesn't seem like an incredibly massive amount of FET has ne necessarily been sold in profit. A lot of dollar terms have been generated, but when you normalize that to actually the current price of FET, it's not actually that massive. So that's, I think, a, a useful insight to think about here as we go forward. doesn't mean that we can't get a massive amount of selling to all, all of a sudden materialize, but we'd want to see that start to show up first. That sign has not emerged quite yet. Or you could see something like this where you have a bit of a correction, then suddenly a bunch of people take profit at that point. Certainly possible. Okay, so the final thing I want to just touch on then was the realized price for FET. And this is a fantastic metric. And again, you're not going to find this most places elsewhere. Most people don't have these on-chain data for these altcoins. And this is basically the average cost basis on the network for FET. So basically for FET, on average, what is the cost basis? Where did people buy it on average across all FET holders? That's what this is telling you here, basically. And so what we can see is that really, as we went into the bear market, most people were in massive loss through here. Then a bunch of people were in profit, then not so much. And now we're massively above this. So we're way above the average cost basis for most people. And that could be concerning when people are in profit in general, and we already know that 100% of people are, but this is telling you more about the degree of profit versus the percentage, which is just telling you how, what proportion or what percentage are in profit. When you see this extreme uh, deviation between basically the average cost basis and the current price, that could be concerning because people might want to be tempted to take profits. So that when you're suddenly so massively in profit from where you bought, you might want to take some off the table and then maybe think if there's other places for that uh, those funds to be better used. But the one thing we can also look at is that in bull markets like this, you can actually sustain these periods of being massively above realized price for a decent amount. You know, look at this, we went up to, this might be kind of analogous to what we're doing right here. We got way above the realized price and then some profit taking happened. And that's why the average uh, real, uh, cost basis here is moving up because people are exchanging FET here, changing hands going up. But then it was really only once we got all the way up here that then we actually saw a notable top before we came back down. And it's similar things playing out where we're going up. And as we we're talking about, some has changed hands. Some FET has changed hands. So the average cost basis is moving up a bit, but we haven't seen this yet. When you start seeing this really steep increase in realized price, that means a lot of profit taking happened. A lot of people had bought in at lower cost bases 
are selling and then that becomes the new cost basis of the new people which is going to be substantially higher and it brings the average up and so in general a bull market is often characterized by these periods of being able to extend yourself very far above those average cost bases but then eventually the music ends and you go into the bear market so this still looks very much like kind of that mid phase of the bull market we're seeing those early parabolic moves start to happen but it wouldn't be surprising to have more of them later. Now, it's an open question of whether or not FET still remains necessarily the best asset to look at relative to other ones in terms of the returns that it'll put in for the remainder of the cycle. I'll leave that up to you to make your own determination. Obviously, none of this is financial advice. So that's a separate question. But just in terms of it on its own, I would not be surprised to see more pumps going forward, especially if we really are in that bull market that it really seems we're in. And with FET, with its fit, with the AI narrative and the amount of hype that it's kind of brought into itself and how strong it's been, that we'd get more action going forward in the bull market would not surprise me at all. Okay, so let's just talk now about some R models and what they're seeing. So these are going to be a bit different. These aren't so much just focused only on on chain. These look at the broader market for FET and assess some different things. So this is our upside downside potential indicator. It's our risk model that we have here at the channel and over at our website, flirtydigital.io. Higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. So this is really trying to tell you is what is the plausible upside that remains for an asset relative to the plausible downside? Well, you'll notice that when you get to these points of extremity, that oftentimes can mark tops. Basically, you're exhausting much of your plausible upside potential. And then oftentimes, then you have to go and reset, realize some of that plausible downside potential before moving on. Same thing here, we went all the way up, realized basically all of our upside potential that was plausible from the model's perspective at that time, had a nice correction. Went back up, had a bit of a correction, now we're on the way back up again. So with the amount of hype and everything around FET, I would not be surprised at all if we get back up to these really high levels, up above four, maybe even getting all the way up to five, which is at the top of the scale. We're not talking at all if we get there. And then we'll have to see how it interacts with those levels. It would not be surprising to see some kind of a correction when we get there. But anything can happen. One of the things that's important to know about FET is that it might be in a bit of a different paradigm now than it was last time. So the model has learned everything that it can from everything that's seen about what FET has done. But it's possible that if something really radically different from the past changes, then the model could be surprised. Now, the model will adjust according to that if it get, does get surprised. But that's just something to keep in mind with it. But I would certainly see that level if we get up there as an important level to watch. It would not be surprising at all to see that be a point where a lot of profit taking happens and maybe some consolidation, maybe even correction happen before a further leg up. We'll have to watch and see. Now, another model we can look at that also paints a kind of bullish picture for the longer term with FET or medium to long term is our forecast model. This gives us a probability estimate that the price of FET will be above where it is right now, six months in the future. So for example, 0.93, what's a 93% chance of upside in six months? And then all the way down here at 8% would be only an 8% chance of upside within six months. And so you see this model did a fantastic job of navigating both the bear market, really getting bearish as we went into the all-time high, leading into the bear market. And then as we got down to the bottom, flipping its bias, getting bullish, and especially as we led into this big rally, getting all the way up to above 80%, came back down a little bit as we had this local top leading into this downside that did happen there within six months, but then quickly reversing back to the upside and saying, in general, a bullish output outlook makes a lot of sense for FET. And that's exactly what we've seen. And it remains pretty bullish here. 87% chance of upside in six months from its estimation. So a lot can happen in short term. A lot can happen in six months, short term, you know, whatever. Longer term, medium, long term, the model is quite bullish on it still. So not financial advice, but just when I look at this, it's one more piece of data that suggests that right now is probably maybe not the last that FET is going to do in this cycle. But unless something really crazy happens with broader markets, we have a big crash, so on and so forth. Unless that doesn't happen, and, and if the momentum carries on like it looks like it is, and we really are entering that bull market, a bullish outlook looks quite reasonable from that perspective. Okay, so final model I wanted to talk about here uh, in this video was our momentum bias indicator for FET. So this one quantifies the amount of momentum in the market, and is it really biased to the upside or to the downside? And so what you'll see is that in bull markets, you spend much more of your time in the green than in the red, and then vice versa. In bear markets, much more time in the red than in the green. But what's interesting about FET is that it transitioned into largely bull market type behavior on its MBI very early. And that was really helped catalyzed by, you know, ChatGBT and all the hype around AI. That coming out of the lows in November, it very quickly catapulted massively high 
in terms of its price. And its momentum also did that as well. It looked exactly like it looked back in the heat of the bull market back here. And so that suggests that there was a lot of momentum that existed in this asset. And though it did have to come back down and play around in the negatives a bit, it kind of went into this oscillation pattern and then now back to the races it's gone. And what's really interesting about FET is it's done this way more rapidly than most other assets. I've talked about this a lot, where with the MBI, you'll tend to notice these, these patterns where you'll kind of have this bear market, deep negatives for a long time, this kind of oscillation that happens, and then you go off into the bull market. FET kind of just went straight from bear market into bull market here in a lot of ways. It had a bit of an extended uh, correction and consolidation and reaccumulation through here. But by and large, the trajectory or the signature on the MBI was very much bull market. And so it seems like that's just continuing. We're shooting up to really high MBI levels again. Now, what's notable about those is that they can often act as points where you will see a local top, at least in the short term, maybe just for, for example, this one was February into March, where then we broke out of it. This one was a much more longer lasting one. Same thing with this being a top, this one also being a top. So it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to correct massively. It could be short term. It could be a deeper correction. Who knows? It would not be surprising in the shorter term if we start seeing that. When we look at the longer picture here, the bigger kind of outlook, I think what we're seeing is still a, a pretty bullish sign. Now, obviously, the best times to be buying FET are well behind us. That's not going to change. There's nothing we can do about that. If we're just thinking about does it have remaining room to run in a bull market, I think it's reasonable to think that that's the case unless something radically changes, unless the data really changed their behavior. The data right now still seem very suggestive of further upside being plausible. And so that's where I think the power of models and the power of looking at on-chain data is really powerful. It can tell us where are people, where are the cost bases of people, how many people are in profit right now, how much profit taking is happening right now. And we can also look at things like its valuation against Bitcoin to get a sense of how it's stacking up against other assets. But FET has been crazy bullish, and I don't think it's going to be done yet in the bull market. That might not be short term. That might not be immediate. That might even not even be after this. Like I could, I could finish recording this and FET could start moving back down. All of that's totally possible. That does not derail that thesis. But from what I'm seeing right now, a bullish outlook makes sense, though, of course, not financial advice. All right, if you like the content or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over an X. A lot of updates from our models are over there and more. And also you can go to our website, partydigital.io, see on-chain data, model data, and more over there.